Hi, I'm Bonnie Judd. I was the animal coordinator for A Dog's Journey, and this is Notes on a Scene with Animals. In this scene, what you're seeing is the dog jumping through the window and he's coming off of a desk. We originally taught him to like jump through the window on the desk without the backpack. While we're teaching him that, we want him to feel like he's totally safe and there's a little bit of an incline in the roof here you can see. So what you can't see, there's scaffolding all along here. There's a trainer that's sort of right here standing on the scaffolding and that trainer's there to safety but the scaffolding's all closed so there's no way the dog can fall from here as he jumps from the window. When you see the dog running you can see that his stride is very long and stretched out which shows that the dog is relaxed and you can see here his ears are hanging down low they're not curling or stressy looking and his stride here is very long like if you watch how he he's moving you can see that he's very relaxed. So a stressed dog uh, walks all buckled up. So you can see that's a happy dog. On this part of the scene, see how tight you are here? It's because when the dog first starts this jump, I'm actually right sort of by the truck. And now I've backed out of frame as they go wide. So as I'm backing out and the dog's jumping, I'm just making sure he's hitting his target, which is right here. I want to make sure he hits that nice and right in the center of it and that he has a good view of where he needs to go. So when he is up here, he actually doesn't really see the truck. He, he needs me here to guide him to where I want him to land, right smack in the middle of the truck and that's the safest areas for him to be. When you don't see the whole view, it's because there's pads and stuff down to safety the dog. For me, uh, safety is everything. If the dog's not happy and the dog's not safe or any animal that I'm working, I, I'm not doing it. Everything you see, we've manufactured. If you see a dog itching, a dog sneezing, you know, we've trained the dogs to do that. I don't want the dogs to feel that emotion. I want them to be happy and joyful and enjoy working because though we, the trainers, are getting paid, how we pay them is like with happiness and joy and praise and um, the odd steak and chicken. <laughs> so, yeah. As we cut to this one, it's the same deal. There's a trainer behind this plant. The backpack is just stuffed with paper so it looks like it's full of stuff, but that kept it light. As he moves, you'll see how close it comes to his feet and it bangs on his legs. Originally went this long and then this long until we got to this length. And he just, over time, got used to feeling the backpack hitting his legs and it was a fun thing. So at first we just do a couple steps and then take the backpack out and be like, yay, good boy, that was awesome. And give him, you know, steak or cookies or whatever then then to the bigger backpack until we finally just ended up with a backpack that was this size we would teach this dog a down stay then we'll start to get this dog to run by with the backpack in his mouth so in the end we're now using several singles all in one scene and we're using the trainer here loads the backpack here in this dog's mouth that happens over here so the trainers over here behind this plant. The other trainer's probably here somewhere where you can't see him. And then we do the whole complete run. And we actually wanted this dog to watch him go by. So we teach our dogs a look, look or watch, and we point to the dog as we load it up and send the other dog. So then the other dog comes through and he watches him go right through just like we wanted as if he was really actually doing that all on his own. Hey, buddy. Bu One dog's being taught to just sort of guard the guy. Hey, buddy. Why don't you come show us some moves? Here we've asked the dog to go to a mark, stand, stay, and speak. So the trainer will actually be over here. And one sent him from here to here, go to your mark. He's gone to a mark here, 
And then another trainer would be somewhere in front of the camera, so he's looking at the camera and he speaks. We want them to look in the direction of the actors, so often we are the actor and um, we're shooting just the dog at this point. The dog's just coming to his mark. We ask him to stand, stay, and then I pull the look wherever the actor was standing or I stand beside the actor. <laughs> part here when you're actually uh, throwing the ball. It's super easy to teach the dog to hit the ball exactly in the same place at exactly the same rate to get it in the basket. What's really difficult is for the trainer to throw the ball exactly the same way and at exactly the same speed every single time. But it's actually quite easy for the dog. Well, I mean, what can you say okay. about this scene? It brought us all to our knees. What a great actor. I'm not just talking about the man, but the dog. <laughs> I mean, you can just see the emotion in the scene. And the most difficult part uh, about this scene is the actor is sort of trying to find within himself something sad. And dogs are creatures that feel our emotions. Here you see the actor's hand is on the dog and that keeps the dog calm and quiet. Keeping his head down and keeping him quiet and breathing quiet is actually pretty difficult when we go through these really emotional scenes where actors are crying or they're talking or they're even just touching the dog because the dog is wired to like try and make us happy, to try and make us feel better. So these scenes are actually a lot more difficult than what most people would think, you know? <laughs> And it's when actors talk to dogs or touch the dogs, often the dogs believe that that's a release command. So the trainer is probably right in front of the camera as the camera's dollying in on this and holding the dog's look with its head down. And so the camera is dollying in onto the dog's face and the trainers are trying to keep the eye line to the camera. When we did the scene on a uh, dog's journey, when I release the dog and I say, all right, the dog like jumps up and wants to play frisbee and is bouncing around. But when we're shooting these scenes, we want them to then go back, lie down, put your head down and stay calm. You know, uh, the first time we ever deal with death is usually with our goldfish or our hamster or a dog. And that prepares us for later on in our lives when we will inevitably lose people in our lives. smells like a... Uh, We've got the dogs all in the elevator. The trainers have all come in, told the dogs to sit, stay, and we actually have Max right at the front door. When this opens up, we want to make sure that she gets out first and clear before the other dogs start pulling. When this door opens, we're calling the dogs like crazy to get them to come through the door as quick as possible. So I'm on the other side of the door just talking to her and that's why you're getting the head tilts. I have a ready, steady, all right, which means like I want you to go as fast as you can. We want the dogs to come out of the elevator and pull as hard as they can and get down to the door as quick as they can. So they're gonna run down the hallway like this and Belle's well in front to make sure she doesn't get a stepped on. In actual fact, Belle's at this point was probably four pounds so she's very very tiny and we really wanted to safety and make sure that the big dogs didn't actually step on her they loved her and they were very careful but when they're all overstimulated and they're super excited and you know we're revving them up to get them to run down the hall you know accidents can happen uh, this way max max come back max I'm actually running beside the handheld camera and then I kind of ran down the whole gauntlet and now I'm behind the door and the rest of the dogs all come in. Max! Trent! We've already taught the dog how to mm -hmm. dig at the door. With this particular dog, she really liked a little duck that I had. It was a little rubber ducky. Just got it from a dollar store. And so originally, I would have the door open maybe that much, an inch maybe, 
and I'd have the rubber ducky and I'd just block the door with my foot and show her the rubber ducky on the other side. And I'd overstimulate her and then when she started digging at the door, I'd open the door and let her come through. Here she identifies, yep, that's where the duck is. And then she knows I'm supposed to dig. And then we added the sit and then speak and then uh, release the dog to go in and get the ducky as these guys are having their little chit chat. So all in very small pieces, all taught in very small pieces. Our job basically is to set very strong patterns. Like often directors will say to me, I don't even need you here. You could just send the dog in a cab. And it's because the dogs learn the pattern so well that it looks effortless, but it's been you know weeks and weeks of training to get them to that point. The chemistry of these two actors, like, um, they had a really good charisma together. And weirdly, the dog just got all caught up in that. <laughs> and she, like, totally loved Kat. Like, I mean, she would see her uh, with 150 crew members. She could pick her out. And she would just bounce on me and look, bounce on me and look. She loved hanging out with her. You can see the dog's ears are up, the tail's wagging, she's super excited and happy. And like you can just see the pure happiness in this dog. Like look at this dog's face. I can't even look at her without getting happy myself, you know. Like she's just such a sweet girl, you know. What drew me to this script is that it really is what I believe. I believe that animals are here to teach us stuff and uh, some of the most important things like being responsible, being a good worker, being loyal, and as people and as trainers, we learn something special out of each animal. I didn't know when I did the casting call, I'd just see 500 dogs, like uh, over two days, I saw 500 dogs. They were brought to the directors and the director and the producers, the writers, they all picked. We as trainers uh, develop uh, lasting bonds with the families and with the dogs for our whole lives and I mean look at this dog's face how could you not <laughs> she's a star she was a star the day I saw her I sent her picture in I made sure her owners I'm like you better be sure you're gonna let let me use this dog because I know when they see this dog this dog is the face of a star they're gonna love her and she's gonna get picked that mug <laughs> that's the mug of a star <laughs>